Hello. Hello. Yep. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. You're. You're. You can go. You can start. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, Hello. Dot. Dot. Com. Two thousand eighteen. Uh, Two thousand nineteen. Uh, this is Shorup Chaudhary from Bangladesh. Uh, today, uh, my topic is uh, overview on APRI machine learning. Actually, APRI is a uh, machine learning algorithm that uh, create association rules from the item set. So, before uh, going uh, our uh, main topic, uh, we need to uh, cover a small um, idea about uh, what is artificial intelligence, what is machine learning, what is deep learning. So what is artificial intelligence? Artificial intelligence is uh, a technique which allows computers to mimic human intelligence, including use of logic, decision trees, and machine learning, including deep learning. So what is machine learning? Machine learning is a, a part of an artificial intelligence, uh, which is a subset of artificial intelligence where statistical methods are used to help a system improve a task with training and experience. This category includes deep learning. So what is deep learning? Deep learning is a subset of machine learning where a system can train itself to perform tasks, including a language image analysis by using multilayered neural networks. So we see that deep learning is a part of machine learning and machine learning is also a part of artificial intelligence. So here uh, today our main topic is machine learning. Uh, we are talking about a priori algorithm, which is a machine learning algorithm. So what is a priori algorithm? A priori algorithm is an unsupervised machine learning algorithm that generates association rules from the given data. Association rule implies that if an item A occurs, then item B also occurs. With a certain probability, most of the association rules generated are in the if then format. So uh, here we see that there is a uh, word uh, which is unsupervised. What is unsupervised? Unsupervised means unlabeled data. When uh, uh, any machine learning model uh, learned from um, unlabeled data. This is we call it uh, unsupervised uh, machine learning, unsupervised learning. So going to our next slide. For example, if people buy a Surface Book, then they also buy a Surface Book case to protect it. For the algorithm to derive such conclusions, it first observes the number of people who brought an iPad case while purchasing a Surface Book. This way, a ratio is derived out of the 100 people who purchased a Surface Book. 85 people also purchased a Surface Book case. Next slide. So there are some three key concepts of a priori algorithm, which is frequent item set, a priori property, and joint operation. What is frequent item set? Frequent item set is a set of items which has minimum support. What is a priori property? A priori property is a subset of infrequent item set which is must be frequent. Join operation to find uh, join operation means uh, when uh, 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 one or two item set um, create a new item set. So this is uh, we call it a join operation. Suppose uh, to find L K K is a set of uh, candidate K item set is generated by joining L K minus one with itself. Applications of priori algorithm. So market basket analysis is the one of the most common applications of a priori algorithm. Many e-commerce giants use a priori to draw data insights on which products are likely to be purchased together and which are most responsive to promotion. For example, a retailer might use a priori to predict people who buy sugar and flour are likely to. So in your picture, we see that when we uh, search um, uh, e-commerce site uh, for buying a uh, Microsoft uh, Surface Pro. So we see that there are other uh, similar product like that. So in, in this picture, we see that uh, system show uh, other uh, similar uh, Microsoft uh, Surface Pro or Surface Book or something like that. So this is called, um, this is here actually a pre algorithm works. Here uh, a pre algorithm create this item set and show the customer this product. So Another uh, application of uh, a priori algorithm is detecting adverse drug reactions. A priori algorithm is used for association analysis on healthcare data, like the drugs taken by patients, characteristics of each patient, adverse ill effects, patient experience. 
initial diagnoses, etc. This analysis produces association rules that help identify the combination of patient characteristics and medications that lead to adverse side effect of the drugs. So actually here, uh, April algorithm um, create rules for the patients, uh, uh, create rules from the uh, uh, um, drugs which is used by patients. Uh, what is a uh, side effect of these drugs? Um, how actually works uh, for the patient of these drugs? So here actually April algorithm work. So now we are diving into how actually April algorithm work, how it work. So before uh, studying that, uh, we need to know that uh, what is input and what is output in a pre algorithm. In the pre algorithm, input is a transaction database and a minimum support threshold set by the users. And what is output? Output is a frequent data set. Uh, so actually here, input is transaction database and output is frequent data set. So in our first step, we see a table where there are four transactions and item set are uh, pasta, lemon, bread, and orange. So we see that each transaction um, have a uh, the different item set. Uh, we see that uh, in transaction one, there are four item set. In transaction two, there are two item set. Three have uh, three item set and four have four item set. So in our item set, we see that uh, uh, for pasta, our uh, support is four. For lemon, it is three. For bread, it is one. For orange, it is three. And for cake, it is two. But here our minimum support is two. So in this step, we need to find uh, the item set uh, which is uh, below our minimum support. So here we see that bread is our uh, bread is a uh, bread item set as minimum support is lower than our minimum support. Our minimum support is two, and here bread uh, bread um, support is one. So we need to cut down uh, this uh, item set and create a new table. So here we see that uh, for new item set, we got pasta, lemon, orange, and cake. And uh, each item set uh, support value is equal to or greater than our minimum support. In this step, we see that each item set uh, in this step, a pre algorithm will find a frequent item set containing two items. To do that, the pre algorithm combines each frequent item set of size one, each single item, actually, to obtain a set of candidate item set of size two containing two items. So uh, here we see that from size one item set two, we are creating size two item set. Uh, from uh, size two item set, uh, there we see that there are six item set. In our next step, we see that um, there are. We need to find that is there any infrequent item set or not. Um, so we see that um, there is no infrequent item set. So what is infrequent item set? I uh, told you uh, in our, in my previous slide. So actually. Uh, infrequent item set is the do those item set um, which have a uh, infrequent subset. So there is no infrequent subset of this item set. So there are no infrequent item set. In my step five, we see that uh, we again need to uh, we we again um, need to calculate um, which item set uh, support value is uh, less than our minimum support. So here we see that lemon and cake. It's lemon and cake because each support value is uh, less than our minimum support, which is one. So we need to cut down this uh, lemon and cake and uh, create a new item set table. So here we see that uh, we got pasta lemon where support value is three, pasta orange where support value is three, also pasta cake is four, is two, sorry, uh, lemon orange is two, and orange cake it is two. So here we are uh, creating support value. Uh, we are taking those support value which uh, minimum, uh, which is um, equal to or greater than our minimum support. In this step, in step eight, in this step we need to find 
also again uh, is there any infrequent subset or not so here we see that now in this time we got two infrequent subset so which is pasta lemon cake and lemon orange cake because here lemon and cake are infrequent so we need to again uh, cut this item set and create a new item set table so from here we got two item set which is pasta lemon orange and pasta orange cake so in this step uh, we again scan the database to calculate the exact support of the candidate item set of size 3 to check if they are really frequent so we see that uh, our both item set support below is equal to our minimum support which is 2 so there is no problem in this step we again um, uh, see that uh, is there in any infrequent subset or not so uh, here we see that there are no infrequent subset because uh, there are no item set uh, which is infrequent so we are uh, taking uh, two of this item set so now in this uh, three size three item set we are creating now uh, size four item set which is pasta lemon orange and cake now we see that uh, algorithm eliminates uh, item set of size four having a size uh, subset of size three because that is infrequent because we see that uh, there is a lemon and cake so we know that a lemon and cake is uh, infrequent subset so we need to cut down this item set so now we got that there are 11 item set this is our main final item set result so here we see that for pasta their support value is 4 for lemon it is 3 for orange it's 3 for cake it is 2 pasta and lemon and pasta and orange both are 3 pasta and cake lemon orange orange cake pasta lemon orange and pasta orange cake they are also 2 so here we see that uh, each item says support value is equal to or greater than our minimum support. So there is no problem. So this is our final item set. So uh, what is the um, advantages of approval algorithm? So actually it is uh, implement is it is easy to implement and um, can be parallelized easily. A priori implementation make use of large item set properties. So we see that when uh, we are using uh, a priori algorithm in e-commerce site or um, something like that, uh, we can easily implement it and um, it can it can be parallelized um, easily um, rather than uh, other uh, machine learning algorithm. And uh, it is perfect for the association rule based uh, machine learning model. Now we see a simple uh, applications uh, on the on based on this uh, approval algorithm. So here we see that this is our applications. This is our uh, main algorithm. So if we run our applications, we we'll see that. So we see that uh, there is a uh, four box, which is uh, one for transaction, frequent item set, another, and another one is frequent item sets. And uh, last one is confidence. So here we see that there is a um, there is a, a option for our minimum confidence. So here we select our minimum confidence is two. Sorry, um, here we select uh, our minimum confidence is sixty percent. And also we are uh, selecting our minimum confidence uh, 
2 minimum support is 2 oh it's a connection problem So, uh, here uh, we are uh, load our uh, transaction data set. So, we see that uh, our transaction data uh, show in the transition box. So, just pass the lemon bread and pass the uh, lemon, pass the orange cake and pass the lemon orange cake. So, uh, now we see that um, if we uh, change our uh, minimum confidence into 61% and our minimum support, we change our minimum support is um, 2. So uh, now uh, we are find uh, our frequent items, which is pasta, lemon, orange, and cake. And each uh, item set value is uh, uh, I think that uh, support below is uh, equal to or greater than our minimum support, which is see before in our slide. And now we see that uh, we check our confidence. So this is our main execution rules uh, for um, this item set uh, transaction. So here we see that um, uh, in confidence section, um, each item set um, confidence section uh, is um, greater than or equal to uh, 60%. So if we change our uh, confidence value, which is uh, 46%, so if we again check our confidence, so here we see that um, there are uh, many other more um, confidence um, association rules item set. So, which is uh, past the orange cake, which is 50, uh, minimum confidence is 50%. So, this is our application. So uh, in our uh, whole um, session, we learned that um, what is actually a pretty algorithm, uh, how actually it works, uh, uh, which kind of uh, platform is perfect for a pretty algorithm. We see that uh, most of the cases are e-commerce sites um, for creating association rules, uh, which is perfect for this algorithm. So. So this is our uh, main session. Hello. Sorry, Sir Rob, we were trying to figure out the sound thing. Could you minimize that window for me, please? Yeah, so sure. we don't get the inception. Can everybody hear me okay out there? Yeah, sure. Everybody on the chat, do you guys hear the echo anymore? Yep, we still got Echo. All right, sweet. Echo all the things. Golness, thank you for the for sounding yes. Oh, sounds great. No Echo? No Echo. Sweet. Thank you. I thought there was an Echo. Uh, perfect. Thank you so much, uh, Saurabh. So uh, I don't think we got any questions. Um, so yeah, I mean, the, the, the epic win here, I'm going to switch this over here to the Q&A so we both see each other. The epic win of the day is that we don't have an Echo and we can chat with you without deafening everybody. So, so Rob, thank you so much. Now, are you, you're a college student right now, right? Yes, uh, right now I'm working as a Microsoft student partner. Awesome, so, so what, are, what are you doing as part of being a Microsoft student partner? Can you tell me a little bit about that? Um, we are uh, conducting workshop uh, about uh, Azure or um, creating um, the, also, uh, arrange workshop for Microsoft Imaging Cup, how a student uh, 
use their uh, implement their ideas by using Azure uh, in Imagine Gap. That's awesome. The one Something thing, like the thing I, I was going to say I loved was that you were using the Azure Labs to bring up your development and do everything there. That was great. Thanks. Uh, so, and the reason why I'm saying that is like, you know, guys, we have uh, a student here uh, doing a presentation remotely all the way from India, right? You're doing all this for us. And so we want you, the community, to share this kind of content with us, right? Yeah, we have the little hiccups with the sound and whatnot and, and people coming in and out. But you know what? This is what makes the community fun, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, thank you so much, um, Sarah, for taking the time to um, share your knowledge with us. Uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to wrap up so we can kind of be caught up in time. And so everybody out there watching the stream, uh, we're going to switch to our slate and we're going to get things going. All right. So Sarah, thank you so much. Uh, it was Thanks. a great presentation. Uh, and we'll be back here um, in about five minutes or so. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thanks.